Hello everyone, this is Dr. Manhattan, and today we continue to explore the topic of the mutated cordyceps fungus pandemic, which the world faced in the Last of Us game series and the TV series released in 2023. Just as a reminder, the setting of the series takes place in our time, 20 years after the cordyceps fungus evolved and learned to capture the nervous system of humans. The plot revolves around a journey across America to deliver a girl with immunity to scientists who are capable of creating a vaccine. The cordyceps brain infection, as it's called in the game, is based on the mechanism of a real existing fungus. I talked about how it works in nature in my previous video, the link to which will be in the description. Nevertheless, let's remember how cordyceps works in the real world. In nature, the cordyceps fungus is common in tropical forests. Its peculiarity is that when its spores enter the body of insects, predominantly lepidopterans, butterflies, caterpillars, and arthropods, ants, spiders, millipedes, it can alter the behavior of the host organism. In about two weeks, the parasite subjugates the host and forces it to climb higher on plants, hide from direct sunlight, and bite into stems or leaves, after which the cordyceps fungus begins to grow out of the head. By this time, the host dies, and the fungus destroys its body, releasing a red-brown fruiting body containing spores that are then released from a height and infect new hosts. The peculiarity of this natural mechanism is that when the cordyceps enters the organism, it creates a network of mycelium, enveloping the muscles and organs of the host from the inside and controlling it. At the same time, the fungus cannot affect the nervous system. In a colony of ants, if a worker with strange behavior is detected, it can be carried out of the anthill so that the cordyceps parasite in it does not become a threat to the colony. Overall, there are over 400 species of cordyceps or entomopathogenic fungi in nature that parasitize insects in one form or another. The most famous of these is cordyceps unilateralis. But it's not the only type of fungi that can parasitize insects and manipulate their behavior, there are, for example, zoopagus fungi that induce flies to go into a sleep state. How does cordyceps work in the game? The The Last of Us game was released in 2013, when developers introduced the concept of a post-apocalyptic world where 60% of humanity had died or been infected with cordyceps. The fungus had learned to take over its victims and developed new means of spreading. Bacteria. No. Fungus. Spores. People could protect themselves from spore clusters with gas masks, but they were not effective in open spaces. Mycelial growths on the bodies of infected individuals protected them from damage and allowed for the transmission of cordyceps spores through bites. Mycelial growths also helped to develop a primitive form of echolocation to help infected individuals navigate after losing their vision. Cordyceps sustained life in infected individuals by forcing them to seek sustenance, including attacking animals. The bodies of deceased infected individuals became sites of fruiting body growth and, consequently, the spread of spores into the air around them. It's important to note that the fungus has learned to do something that cordyceps in nature cannot, manipulate the nervous system and control infected individuals for its own purposes. The aggression of infected individuals in the game is a result of the fungus's drive to reproduce. Another important point is that animals are not susceptible to the fungus. Monkeys and giraffes were encountered in the game, and in The Last of Us Part 2, a dog did not show symptoms of infection after being bitten by an infected. In the early stages of the development of the first game, Naughty Dog wanted to introduce lions and elephants infected with cordyceps, but abandoned the idea. Thus, the mutation appears to be a protective mechanism of nature aimed at humanity. How does Cordyceps work in the TV series? In 2023, a series was released on HBO Max, in which the method of spreading the fungus was changed. The creators of the series abandoned the spores in favor of the mycelium. Infected individuals transmitted its particles to their victims through bites, 
allowing the fungus to enter a new host where it developed and took over the nervous system. Another innovation in the series is that Cordyceps works as a single organism, spreading mycelium, tendrils, over vast areas. If its clusters are damaged in one place, it is capable of sending infected individuals located several kilometers away to investigate the damage to the mycelium. What do mycology experts say about this? Let's see what the well-known mycologist, naturalist, and science popularizer Paul Stamets has to say on this topic. In the series, it is claimed that cordyceps mutation is possible due to temperature changes, for example, global warming, which forces the fungi to change their methods of spreading. Responding to the question of how likely such a scenario is, Paul states that the issue is not with the scenario itself, but with the claim. Climate change cannot affect it to this extent, at least not until it begins to affect the host's population, in our case, ants. In the context of the show, the cordyceps fungus mutates and infects humans, causing a pandemic. However, in reality, the chances of this happening are extremely low. Cordyceps is a parasitic fungus that primarily affects insects and arthropods, such as ants and spiders, and it is unlikely to affect mammals such as humans. Furthermore, Cordyceps spores cannot survive thermal processing, and the fungus does not spread through the air or via food like in the show. The show also portrays the fungus as having the ability to transmit signals across long distances through its mycelium. However, this is not possible in reality, as each fungus is a separate living organism, and they interact with each other through either ignoring or engaging in biochemical warfare. There are other types of fungi that are more dangerous to humans than cordyceps, such as deadly ammonita mushrooms, deep mycoses, and poisonous mushrooms like the death cap. In addition, the widespread use of antibiotics has led to the destruction of the human microbiome, making people more susceptible to fungal infections. Despite the fact that cordyceps is used in traditional Chinese medicine as a rejuvenating agent and is also used in various medications and sports supplements, the realism of a pandemic scenario considering the experience that humanity gained after the encounter with COVID-19 seems insignificant because COVID is inherently adapted to humans, while the Chinese cordyceps is adapted to caterpillar fungus. In conclusion, it seems that we can sleep peacefully knowing that the cordyceps mushroom will not be the cause of human extinction or a global pandemic. However, this is not very reassuring, considering that humanity already has ways to destroy itself and all life on Earth. These ways will be discussed in the next videos. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting and remember that. And remember, only what can happen does happen.